Hey guys, welcome back to The Detour. I'm Cecily and today we're going to be looking at squats. The squat position is one of those things that for some people can present real challenges because it's just been too long since we did one. So we're going to get into that position today in all kinds of ways and I'll look forward to seeing it in a moment. We'll get started. Alright, so when we look at the squat, there's all kinds of things that the body is going to benefit from in order to make this position feel more accessible. So one way that we'll start making this feel like a more natural sitting or resting position is to get into our ankles. So basically drop into a half a squat to begin and just get yourself oriented in a way where you're comfortable with this knee. So if you're okay sitting, great. But if you'd rather be in more of a lunge position, this will work too. So from the lunge, I would just drive my front knee forward of the toes. In the half kneeling seated position, I do the same thing with the goal being to introduce more length into the back of my Achilles and into the calf. If you can think of like the opposite of this, which would be coming up onto the toes and shortening the Achilles, you can imagine how wearing high heels or even for me as a dancer coming into yoga, I could never squat because the whole front side of my foot and, and, and shin bone were elongated and the back side was shortened. Whereas in a squat, we want the opposite, long in the back side and shorter in the front side. So introducing this type of work into my ankles has been a game changer. So once you spend some time on that left leg or whatever, we, whatever leg you started with, go ahead and switch sides. And we're gonna explore a little bit of pushing and pulling on this side, so as I lean in, I'm going to think of pushing that right foot really strongly through the floor, just noticing a little bit more waking up sensation when I do that, and then alternate that sense of pushing down with pulling up. So it's like I'm trying to keep the load going forward, but then work my foot toward my shin, which is difficult. You can see it's not actually moving, but it's just again about the effort and the intention. And then if you felt like your ankles need a lot more work, any kind of mobility training in there for the feet, ankle circles, doing lots of heel raises, these are all really, really good things for your feet in general. The next thing we'll have to look at though in terms of getting our squat happening is what's happening in terms of knee flexion and hip flexion. So what that means is bending the knees and also being able to bend into the hips. So if we have issues with that, one of the areas that we want to address are our hamstrings. So I'm going to bring myself onto the back and basically start building my squat from here. So just with one leg at a time, I'm going to take that right one up into the air, feel my hamstrings contract to pull my heel towards the sit bone, and just notice if you feel with your fingers, are those muscles doing anything down there? Right along the back of the thigh. So that would be one half of that work, knee flexion assisted by the hamstrings, and then we also have hip flexion. So am I able to rotate my hip, the thigh bone within the hip socket rather, using the strength of my hip flexors to pull that knee up kind of toward my armpit. So there's a little bit of external rotation happening there and I'm closing the gap as you can see between my body and my thigh. And then let's put another other leg. So I'll take the left one up, activate those hamstrings and pull the heel in toward the sit bone. Just enough to kind of get those muscles waking up and on the map so I know in my brain what my body needs to do to get this action to happen. And then moving into that hip flexion, pulling up, noticing as I'm doing that that there's no compensation of rolling over into that hip. My back stays still and I'm isolating that through my leg. One more time. I'm going to keep the left leg there, hold on to it, and then bring my right leg up into that same position. So here I'm basically in a squat. I've got my spine nice and straight, my ankles in dorsiflexion, and then I'm going to keep my knees tucked in toward the chest and reach my arms forward. And just take a moment in this position, noticing what you feel. What messages are your, is your body sending you where it's kind of telling you where you might have some restrictions? Okay, if those restrictions are being felt in your inner thighs, then we may have to do some mobilization there of the hips. 
If we're feeling the lower back, then this might be an indication that we need to spend some more time with the back supported, maybe even just taking the legs up the wall and getting some length there into the lumbar spine. Let's pay attention to those hips for now. So when you're ready, coming back up onto all fours and arranging yourself in a way like if you need some padding under your knees, then you're more than welcome to grab a blanket or roll the mat up so that it's more comfortable. In terms of upper body, I might choose to stay on the, on the wrists or drop down towards the elbows, bringing one knee into the chest and then open the knee up towards the side, taking it back behind and down underneath and then reverse the direction, taking the knee back, opening up and bringing it back in. Second side, in, out, up, and down. Then we swing it back, up and out, in, and down. Those circles you could repeat anywhere from three to five or maybe even eight reps on each of the legs just to kind of get your hips used to this idea of strength in external and internal rotation. Then we're going to begin to build our squat pattern sitting up. So to start off with, let's make a seat. So if you've got something that resembles yoga blocks or a small stool, then bring yourself up onto those and just get a feel for how that works for your hips and for your knees. If that has to come up higher, then let it and then start to bring yourself into a position where you can get a sense of that ankle flexion again. So as I set myself up and just bring the heels nice and close to the blocks, how do things feel in terms of the ankle, the knee, the hip? And then most importantly, can I sit comfortably here and stand back up? Okay. If that felt difficult, then bring yourself onto a higher seat. The idea of being able to get down and back up again, only using the strength of the legs, is really important. So I'm not leaning into my hands to come up and I'm also not doing a big shift forward through my chest. Okay. And then once that starts to feel a little bit more comfortable, which might not be today, it might take a little while. I've got two ideas here for how we can keep support in the squat. So one is just a wooden dowel. You can buy these from a hardware store that might just need to get sanded a little bit. And the idea is that I use the dowel, I'll show you from the side, underneath my heels. So I set up the dowel, giving myself the heel elevation. And the reason why that works well is that if it's difficult for us to come into that full flexion of the ankle in dorsiflexion, by elevating the heel, it's a little bit more like what my foot is used to in a shoe, which is not a bad thing. It's just a gradual approach of introducing mobility into that range without demanding so much that at this point, a lot of our feet aren't ready for. A similar approach can be used with this wedge. This is from a Canadian company that is called Half Moon. It's just made out of cork. And I can use it in the same way to support my heels. So whatever you have access to, even something around the house that kind of looks like one of these things, can be great to just help you get into this deeper position. But if still those blocks didn't feel like it was all that accessible, then I definitely say to stay there for a little while and then in time start to come down into something like this. Once we're comfortable in a squat, then the idea is to start being able to move here. So can I move into external rotation with both legs? Can I move into internal rotation with both legs? Can I keep my lower body static and bring this into an upper body rotation? feeling some freedom there in my spine, despite the position of my lower body. And then like before, when we were using the blocks, being able to get up and down fairly easily, coming back to that sense of hamstring engagement. So as I stand up, hamstrings are lengthened. As I come down, I think of pulling my hips toward my heels, my heels toward my hips. Arms might travel over the head or they might go behind the head, or you might start holding on to a little weight. There's all kinds of different ways you can progress your squat, but trust me, if you spend a lot of time sitting in a chair, this is a range of motion that your body is missing. And by bringing it back in, it can make a huge difference to your overall posture and the strength of your 
lower quadrant in general. So I encourage you to play with this stuff. And if you have any questions, write into us. I look forward to seeing you next time as we follow the detour together.